All right, guys, welcome back to the Four Type Make You Loco channel. So today we're gonna show you the very first thing that I check when a vehicle comes into my shop for a timing job. Um, this is gonna help me determine does it need an engine or does it need a timing job? It's a very simple check and we're gonna show you how today. Let's go over to the vehicle and get started. Okay, so the issue we're gonna talk about today is most common on the 06 through 08 model years. It can be any model, but the 06 through 08 years, those are the absolute worst, with 07, of course, being the sweet spot, the one you want to avoid at all costs. So this one right here is an 06 Expedition. The customer brought it in, says, you know, it's not running so well anymore. It has check engine light on with timing error code set. Check it out, see if it needs a timing job like every other 543 valve out there. And if so, go ahead and do it. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna check it out before we just commit to a full on timing job. So one of the first things I do, of course, I'll check the oil level, make sure it's full, make sure it's not cooked because the whole VCT system is ran off of oil and oil pressure. Same thing over here. I'll pull the oil fill cap, get a good flashlight down in there and I'll get a general sense of the inside of the engine, make sure the inside of the engine is not cooked. And then I'll, of course, pull codes on it. So you can see it's an 06, about 150,000 miles on it. Yeah, it's due for a timing job, but does it need an engine? So let's pull some codes on it. Yep, sure enough, usual timing error codes for being over-retarded, over-advanced. We have lean codes, efficiency codes, and stuck lean codes in the O2s. Uh, all codes that I ignore until the two for the... Uh, timing error codes are fixed because everything else is affected by the engine running properly up here with the timing error codes. So, okay, I checked all that on this one and it looks good to go. The very next thing I'll do, because it is, you know, one of those years that are most common for this concern, is I will do a quick visual for crankshaft end play. So what happens is a thrush washer on these, they like to get eaten up for whatever reason on these years, and then the crankshaft will start to walk back and forth. And when it does that, it loses oil pressure, and then it starts having VCT timing error codes because a thrust washer in the crankshaft is done for. So if you look at this one, you get a good flashlight down in here. All you gotta do is look at it, and here's the crankshaft pulley right here. You see it, the big pulley at the bottom? Well, it should be just about smashed against that front cover, the timing cover on there. So let me try to focus you in here. Let me try to hold the focus. There we go. So on this one, I know it's hard to tell from up top here, but I'll show you again down below. It's sticking way out from that front cover. Probably, let me look at it. Probably a quarter inch or so. Big time it's sticking way out of there. Now, again, like I said, the 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 dampener should be so close to that front cover it looks like it's you know touching basically so go ahead and we'll show you with a long screwdriver get down in there just to illustrate it i mean look at that it fits right in there that's how much room is behind there and this thing should be just about touching the front cover and I could fit that way down there. You'll see from down below in a second here where it's 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 sticking way out on there. So just for example, this one right here is an, I believe an 06 or an 07 also. Uh, this one did pass the thrust washer check. I did a timing job on it about a year or so ago. Everything's great with it. He's back for some driveline stuff, dry shaft, stuff like that. So this one right here, like I said, is, is just fine and it passed. And it's a really good example to show you how it should look. So again, I'll try to get you down in here and focus. There you go. So look at that dampener right here. Again, is a dampener right there. Look how close it is to the front cover. It looks like it's almost touching, right? That's how it should look. So a spec on here is like 3,000 to 14,000 to end play. Most of the ones that I get in that I do actual end play checks on with a, a dial indicator are around seven to eight thousandths of movement max. Uh, so they're usually right against the front cover like that. that's how they should look. So when you look at the other one over there, you do a quick visual and you see it sticking out a quarter inch. 
on the expedition over there, it, it throws a red flag immediately. So let's go ahead and go underneath the vehicle. We're gonna show you how to do an end play check to verify it really easily without any special tools. Okay, so this is how I check for crankshaft end play to see if that thrust washer has actually failed. So on this one, we know it has failed already. It probably has 30 thousandths of end play and they're well beyond the spec. Uh, but what I'll show you is this one, how I check for it and how bad this one is. Uh, but I'll also probably show you in the end what a good one looks like on the other engine over there. So what you wanna do is you just wanna slide underneath your vehicle here. You shouldn't need the jacket up or anything. Slide yourself underneath here. Get a good flashlight pointing up at the crankshaft dampener on there. You can see it right there. So we can get a good view of it so we can see how much end play is actually going on here. So if you look at this one, you can see it's much easier to see from down below here how much of a gap there is between the dampener and the front cover on there. Uh, you know, for a dampener that should just about be touching the front cover, you can see there's one heck of a gap and there's definitely something going on here. So what we're going to do now is a real crude method of checking for crankshaft end play. We basically need a decent sized pry bar and a small block of wood. And that's it. All right, here we go. We're going to show you exactly how to do this. So what you want to do is your block of wood... You're going to place it right here against the cross member. You're going to take your bar and initially you're going to put it on the front side of the crankshaft dampener there. And we're going to push the crankshaft into the engine all the way. Just like that. So no matter how far out or in it is, we're going to make sure it's all the way in. Just like that. Okay, it's good to go. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your pry bar and put it on the back side of the dampener like that. And we're gonna pry off the steering gear right here. And we're gonna pull the crankshaft out of the engine. You see how much movement there was on that one? It's very obvious. Let me do it again. So if you're unsure, you know, in and out a couple times to make sure this one's very obvious that it's failed. I'm gonna try to go over here off to the side, so I'm out of your way, so you guys can see this. Here we go, we're gonna pull it out. And that noise you're hearing right there is actually the crankshaft touching the back side of the oil pump inside of there. That's how much it's moving. So hopefully you got a nice close up going on there. All the way in. Watch it again. All the way out look at that that amount of movement on there so with that when you have a situation like that uh, the other indicator is this right here for me anyway now I know the 543 valve doesn't really have an issue with rear main seals leaking it's probably changed one or two of my whole life these engines and I've been working on them since they came out in 04 look at this one look at the amount of oil all over back here it's actually forming drips on uh, the sway bar here and it's all over the bell housing all over the back side here and the pan if you look at it is dry all the way up so the common leak on the the, the oil pans uh, that people misdiagnose all the time is oh it's oil pan leak oh it's a rear main seal leak when actually the pan is wet all the way from the front to the rear and it just pulls up back here. But in this case, you can see it's dry. Both sides are dry like this. But back here, just concentrated, is tons of oil. Because the rear main is leaking because that crankshaft is going in and out, in and out of the engine. It's walking so much that's tearing up the rear main seal on there. Okay, now we're gonna do the same exact test on a good 543 valve engine with zero thrust washer issues. So again, we're gonna start off by pushing the crankshaft into the engine. Okay, good to go. And then we're gonna try prying it out. Same exact way. 
Now you see that little bit of movement there when he's really prying on it there? That is the rubber dampener part of the pulley that's flexing. It's not actual crankshaft uh, movement. So that's just a dampener. So go back again. Push it back into the engine. So this is the way it should look. You, there's no discernible movement at all. We're going back and forth, back and forth, and there's no discernible movement at all. So watch, we're gonna try to pull out again. Good pry on there, right? And you see that little bit of movement right there? See that? It moves like that. That is just the rubber on the dampener moving and giving way. That's not actual crankshaft play. So this one probably has, you know, four or six thousandths of play on there well within the spec. That's how they should look. They should barely move it, if anything at all. It's very obvious which one has failed here. All right, so you guys saw that was it was pretty obvious which one was bad, even without a dial indicator. Did you learn something today? Definitely was interesting. Uh, learned something today for sure. It's one of those pre-checks you want to do. All I really do here is timing jobs. You're going to be taking over the company here eventually. Eventually, yep. Timing jobs are never going to end, especially in the 543 valve, it seems. Uh, so it's one of those things you want to check before you get in too deep and spend thousands of dollars. And then you come out and you still have the same problem with oil pressure and volume issues. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.